Hello, hello, and welcome back to another video of mine. I'm back from a little bit longer hiatus than usual. I mean, I don't do uh, videos on this channel regularly, but uh, yeah, this actually took me a couple of months, you know, summer and stuff. I just had other things to do. I'm sorry, but I'm back now. And I decided to break the pause with something which is relatively simple. So we've got a Nokia 6300 here, which uh, actually most of you are probably familiar with because uh, back in 2007 and the following years, this phone was quite popular, I believe. So nothing really exotic for now. Uh, yeah, so enjoy a long and rumbly video about a phone that most of you have probably seen, many of you have probably even used. There you go. Uh, nothing new here. <laughs> anyway, let's start with the phone itself. So the Nokia CC300, very elegant, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, we can probably say that this was a follow-up to the Nokia 63... No, 6230i, that's what I mean. You know, one of the first phones that I've made on this channel. Um, probably, yes, there was a, also the model in between the Nokia 6233 or 6234, which was like a Vodafone version or something like that. But um, yeah, those were not so popular, I think, because, well, the design was just kind of weird. This is much nicer, and it's made of aluminium, which is even better. It actually feels really nice uh, in one's hand, I must say. So yeah, this is really good. Um, yeah, actually, I can show you. Yeah, you can hear this is real metal, you know. And since we opened it, let's take a look at this. So the original BL4C battery is actually a little bit smaller than the more common uh, BL5C. I cannot get the BL5C inside of this slot. Sort of, well, it's just it's just too big, and I don't want to like push it or anything like that because I'm not that crazy. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's take a look at the sticker. Made in Hungary. Yeah, anything of interest? I don't know. The regular SIM card goes here. We don't need a SIM card in order to use this phone, which is good, so I don't have any here. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Let's put the battery back in. And uh, here is a slot for micro SD card. Now, like this is one of the first phones with the micro SD support, so it means it doesn't yet support the uh, high capacity micro SD cards. So anything bigger than like two gigabytes, I believe, won't be supported by the phone. There you go. Good. Let's put the cover back on. Yeah, uh, here's a camera, a two megapixel camera. Uh, <laughs> they advertise it here for you, but it's pretty useless. This camera is not very good. You know, like two megapixel was like a standard thing back then, nothing really spectacular. And uh, yeah, and a speaker. Not too loud, but the sound is pretty nice, actually. Well, no, quite pleasant to listen to. So there we go. Yeah, uh, the camera, uh, no autofocus here, no LED flash or anything like that. No, it's just a very, very plain, basic camera, I'd say. You know, similar to what you find in the first generation iPhone, maybe. Good, um, which is from the same year, by the way. Yeah, so, uh, okay. Uh, here we've got a notification LED, and here's another one. Uh, they both blink or shine in blue, and I notify her of like um, uh, incoming messages and missed calls and stuff like that. So that was really neat. But you could switch it off if you didn't want to. And uh, here we've got a volume rocker on the right hand side, you know, and here at the top. The off switch, which I'm not really focusing on. I'll try it now. Good. Um, yeah, there was an off switch logo on it in red. It's not very well visible anymore. Yeah, this is a used phone, obviously. If you take a look at the keypad, <laughs> very, very obviously worn out. The keys are made of plastic. So this is what happens when you have a little bit longer fingernails or anything like that, you know. It's just like, yeah, the screen is also not in the, like the best condition, uh, but it's still, well, fairly visible, I believe. And the buttons here, yeah, the buttons, of course, the blue ones are like the software keys. This is the send or receive key, and this is the end key, and the D-pad is also kind of worn out, but fully functional, so that's good. Is there anything else? The connectors, of course, we need to speak about those. So yeah, um, a small Nokia charger, of course, 
This on the right, that's a mini USB, which was pretty unusual for Nokia, but it, luckily, I don't know if I'm able to get in. I may be. Um, anyway, uh, what I want to say, yeah, there we go. It's a little bit dirty, sorry. Yeah, this one was used. So this is a mini USB, you know, a predecessor of the micro USB, which was used heavily later on. Um, and Nokia finally gave up on the uh, pop port, the horrible pop port connector, which I mentioned many times in my previous videos with phones that had them. So yeah, this was definitely much, much better. And it was a standard, of course, you know, so uh, you could use even third party cables, but you had to be careful that those cables were actually capable of transferring data. Mm, uh, there you go, yeah. This in the middle is a jack. It's a headphone jack, but unfortunately it's not a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, it's just 2.5. And uh, yeah, when I actually um, pulled this phone out and uh, saw it again, I was like, oh, okay, gotta find a pair of headphones for this. But of course I did, actually. And there they are. So, headphones. I think that the original headphones that came with this phone uh, look pretty much the same. <laughs> Sorry, maybe it's the exact same pair. I'm not really sure, but I think it might be. Yeah, and this is the headphone jack. You know, so you can put it in like this. Of course, it fits. Uh, we're going to have some fun with it later on. I guess, you know, because there's a radio inside. Spoilers. Anyway, uh, that's the outside of the phone. We can probably turn it on now. I'll put it like this because uh, these LEDs also shine when you turn the phone on. See? Oh, nice. Okay, now the whole camera is blinking. Start up phone without SIM card, yes, please. And it plays the jingle. Yeah, I turned it on for you because I know some people like it actually very much on camera. It's quite popular. So I did it. You're welcome. Anyway, the screen, 240 by 320. It's actually pretty nice. It was definitely nice um, back in 2007, yeah. I remember liking this screen very much. Yeah, um, it's a plain home screen, uh, this one, but you could actually also set up uh, some kind of like a smart home screen, something like that. We'll get to that, I believe. Uh, anyway, we've got a go-to, which was like a, you know, a custom menu. You could put whatever you wanted in there. I hope the camera is focusing on this. Um, not, not very well, I'm sorry. This is probably going to be the best that we've got. So, uh, I've got a couple of functions here. We'll go through them in the main menu anyway. And uh, the inbox is just a uh, message inbox. There you go, with text messages. But you could set this to uh, whatever function you wanted. Uh, the volume keys, as I said, yes, these are volume keys. Huh. A little bit stiff, but yeah, they work. And uh, the top button also serves as a profile selector. Or you can switch the phone off. Or lock the keypad like this. Yeah, we can unlock it again. So there you go. And this is the main menu. And uh, now the camera, uh, actually, yeah, it was blinking with really hollow, I'm sorry. So this is the main menu icons. Looks quite nice. Uh, you had other options, actually. You could change the view to one of these four options. Four, that's quite a lot, actually, for a feature phone, at least. So you could have a plain list like this, or you could have the grid, which was the same, only without the labels underneath. And you could also have the tab view, like this. Would be practical, but actually is kind of slow. You know, I press the button and wait for about half a second before it changes. So yeah, unfortunately, don't like that one too much. So grid with labels, which is what, as far as I know, pretty much everyone had set up like this. Um, I moved the messaging to the middle, because that was kind of, uh, I don't know, that, that was the most usual position for 
messages, obviously. Uh, if we open them, we've got a, well, a couple of editors. So here we can type a text message. This is also a change from the previous Nokia cases that you would select like the recipient of messages here, and you could have more than one. But unfortunately, we don't have any contacts here. No. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to pretend that I'm texting to 123.5, which is not really true. And with that, we go. And we can type, oh, T9, sorry. Hello. How are you doing like this? So this is what the text message looks like. You could also add some emoticons. They don't look very nice, actually. That's some, I don't know. Uh, Nokia was attempting some kind of like a 3D effect on them or something like that, but yeah, the, the screen cannot really handle it because it's too low resolution for graphics like this. And yeah, now it's even uglier. But okay, it served the purpose, whatever. Save the message, definitely not. You could also create a multimedia message, which was just confusing. Oh, uh, multimedia plus. Actually, I have no idea what this means. And they've got a flash, mass, uh, flash message. A uh, flash message would, well, that was an interesting idea. You could just send a message directly to someone's screen. They, don't need, they didn't need to open it or anything like that. And you could also just type in hello. And there was the f one function, which I kind of remember for some reason that uh, it could actually flash. Maybe that's why it was called a flash message. So this triangle at the end would make the text flash. Yeah. Isn't that fantastic? Hmm. Anyway, uh, audio message, which is just a multimedia message. Um, but you could just quickly record yourself saying something and send it over. So that was kind of easier. Uh, of course, a very many different um, folders of messages, which is probably not that interesting. There's an email client, by the way, but it's actually a Java application. That's why it opens like this. So I'm going to close it. Um, yeah, an email client's Java application was not very useful because you couldn't, uh, you know, you couldn't withdraw your emails in the background or anything like that. You always have to open the application. Uh, not very convenient, I think. I am. I am the one and only. Okay, I have to refocus on it a little bit. Um, so that was the wireless village, I believe, you know, a thing that I also mentioned a couple of times in the videos and like, mm, nobody really used that. I've got voice messages, which was just a mailbox, voice mailbox, you know, like a regular one and info messages, of course, service commands, and you could delete it all and uh, you'd be done with it. So that was all right, I guess. Let's take a look at contacts. Actually not, because they're empty. But if we can create a new contact, let's say it's for Jeff. Jeff, I don't know, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, let's, let's pretend that we're friends with Jeff Bezos. I cannot even type his name. Look how simple. And you would type in a phone number, which would be like plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Definitely. He has enough money to actually buy a phone number like this, I believe. And you can save it or you can add more details if you wanted, um, which would be add detail, probably a number, number five types, a phone number. A push to talk address. Yeah, this one also has push to talk more, more another feature that nobody used. Great. Uh, an email address, the video tone, web address, company, job title, formal name. I like even for <laughs> formal name. What does it actually mean? Like even more formal than usual. Well, maybe someone actually wanted to use like uh, nicknames in the address book. I don't know. Yeah, but there's a nickname as well. So hmm. whatever. Uh, postal address, user ID, a birthday note and image. There you go. It's interesting, you can assign an image here, then there's a tone here in the middle and video and so on. So it's kind of like a random... No, let's not save this. 
uh, could synchronize it somehow. It requires a SIM card. Fair enough. So it's probably like a data sync. Uh, some settings, of course, you could change the contact view, which, well, that was probably convenient a little bit. And this, which was also new for Nokia, because usually they only had like one field for, for the entire name or something like that. Now, if they had to, like the first name and last name, you could change the way that it was displayed. And ordering was then based on that as well. So there you go. Um, yeah, you could make the font bigger if you wanted to. And uh, yeah, uh, the storage was only shown a percentage. But I believe it could be like a thousand contacts there. Something like that. Definitely more than most people use even. And some groups. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just... Uh, just uh, read a discussion online about the iPhone not supporting caller groups or something like that and how stupid it is. And so there you go, like the 14-year-old uh, uh, Nokia 6300 supported groups. So, yeah, you can take an inspiration here. Speed dials are obvious. And, yeah, you could move and copy contacts from two different memories and so on. Uh, this is a call log, of course. So there's nothing there. And you could also check out the message recipients. We don't have anything here either. It's just the logs. Let's see how long this phone has been called with so far. 53 hours. I would expect more. It's interesting. Um, anyway, here's some settings, some very interesting settings here with profiles. So... Yeah, profiles are basically sound settings, only about well, different categories where you could then switch between. Everybody remembers that, but nobody has it anymore on their smartphones. So it was easy. Then we've got themes. How many themes do we have? Seven. Let's take a look. We've got beach huts. Looks kind of nice, yeah. We've got beach itself. Looks kind of nice as well. We've got hide and seek. Uh, some of these themes probably also change the icons. I don't remember whether it's one of those as well. Mountain. Looks lovely. Noir. That's black in French, if anyone was wondering. No, <clears throat> stop being smart pants. Uh, Nokia, the regular one, and Ripple. Well, that's a weird combination of colors. I don't think any of these actually change the icons. Probably not. Uh, it was the other Nokia that did that, and, and I have it. So in one of my future videos, I'm going to demonstrate this. Uh, there you go. So tones. Um, as we went through this, the ringtone, of course, you can change that. Uh, five stages of volume. You could have, like, a video for a ringtone or something, which is kind of strange. A lot of these push to talk. Oh, yeah, vibration, by the way. Can you hear it? It's a nice vibration motor, you know, it's not too loud and it's quite powerful. So, you know, serves a purpose. The push to talk settings, nobody really cared about any of these. I don't know what Nokia was doing here. Uh, message alert, of course, the regular ones. I'll also show these uh, in the next video. And uh, some of these other bleeps and beeps. And I didn't like any of these, so I sh just switched them off. There you go. And display, so we can take a look at some wallpapers because there aren't very many of them, if I remember correctly. Well, I've got 20, yeah, only four wallpapers pretty much that we can choose. So if we select, oh, just activated it. No, I just wanted to view it. There was no option to do that. Huh. Oh, or was there? No. Yeah, it supported the flash animations, by the way, which is kind of interesting. A uh, flower, we can open a flower here, and then we can open the sunshine, which is a GIF. It does move, I don't know if you can see it, I definitely can't, at least not on this camera, but it, yeah, it's, it's that. We'll take a look at the um, flash animations separately from the graphics, but you can see, yeah, this is what it may look like. It's actually pretty nice. I'll keep it. Good. 
Uh, back to settings. We have time and date. Yeah, uh, actually the time and date this time is even correct. <laughs> this is probably the first where I set up a date and time uh, to the correct values, you know, for once. Yeah, there you go. And I've got shortcuts. So yeah, I talked about this. You could, yeah, you can actually change the left selection key, the right selection key, the way you want to. And then the navigation key also, yeah, it has different functions. So upwards, you go to camera, downwards, you open your contacts and a uh, message editor to the left and calendar to the right. You can change these to whatever but most people will probably just keep it uh, on the default uh, values because it kind of makes sense. And voice commands, yeah, with Mr. Robot here, I remember that was kind of interesting. Record. This is how the robot says record. Or oh, audible alerts, so let's go for these. Audible battery bar. Audible battery bar. And audible signal bar as well. Audible signal bar. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is, you know, kind of, it sounds kind of scary. Call voice mailbox, okay. Call voice mailbox. So the idea was that, of course, you didn't need to pre-record your voice commands anymore uh, because there was a some kind of a sound engine already with Mr. Robot here. And... Uh, uh, yeah. So you could hear actually what, it, what it's supposed to sound like, what, you, what you're supposed to say when calling up a function. So, um, let's do it actually, let's do the demo. Call voice mailbox. Call voice mailbox. Yeah, kind of works. Of course, I'm not going to call it anywhere because I don't have a SIM card in there, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, technology of the uh, last decade. Um, what do we have next? The connectivity. Yeah, we have Bluetooth. We don't have infrared anymore. This is one of the first Nokia's probably that emitted infrared, I believe. Um, it was not a big loss, I'd say. And of course, some, some of the other options. USB data cable is now grayed out. If you connect it to a computer, it can actually support uh, the mass storage. So it can pretend to be uh, an external disk, which was useful, I believe. I've got call, of course call settings, voice clarity. Yeah, okay, that's a function. I actually don't know what exactly it does, but it does anything at all, but it was there. And the others are just uh, regular ones, of course, the phone settings. Let's go through the languages. Uh, we have English, German, Slovak, Slovene, Slovenian. I don't know, I never know actually whether it's Slovene or Slovenian. <laughs> that's interesting. Slovenian, I think it's a language. Slovene is a person. It sounds to me like that. So Slovak, Slovakian. Same thing. I don't know. Serbian, uh, Hungarian, Czech, Croatian. Yeah. So this is the uh, region, uh, the Balkans and uh, well, the Central Europe, pretty much. And the recognition language, the same thing. So you could have it in another language. German, for instance. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, you could set up a security code, of course. A welcome note. Okay, that's the piece of text that appears at the beginning. I didn't have one here. Usually I put something like hello in there. You could see in the past videos, well, times change. And we've got the help text activation, of course. That was like a, um, a contextual help text, really, <laughs> that just pops up, which is nice. And a startup tone. That's the jingle that you could hear at the beginning when I turned the phone on. Enhancements. So yeah, I've got a charger, but we don't have a headphones. I don't know why. Nobody put headphones in. I've put headphones in now. See if it appears. I cannot really see it. It's kind of dark. Can we see the headphones now? No. Not really. Okay. That's disappointing. So in the charger, yeah, you could actually set it up so that if you connect the charger, that uh, it would, for example, the, the light would just stay on and it would change the profile as well. Could be useful for some because, you know, some people actually just charge only overnight when they go to sleep. So they want also their silent profile to be activated automatically or something like that. It's um, pretty convenient, I believe. Uh, configuration is, of course, very boring and security is even more boring, yet important. 
and you can restore the phone to the factory settings if you wanted to, you know, if you're selling or something like that. So in the gallery, what do we have in the gallery? Images, that would be photos. And we don't actually have any photos. Oh, there you go. Uh, then we've got video clips, uh, which are also the videos that you take over the phone. And the music files. <laughs> I don't have anything in here because the phone itself actually doesn't have a very big memory. I can show you right now. We only have like 3.3 megabytes of free memory. Yeah, that's why it relied so heavily on memory cards. There you go. Uh, we have the themes which we saw and we have the graphics. So we can take a look at, not here, no. We can take a look at some of those flash wallpapers. So if I open this one, yeah, this is what we have in a wall, as a wallpaper now, actually. And uh, yeah, it looks much better than, uh, than GIF, of course. So it's a shame that, uh, well, Adobe Flash, a former Macromedia Flash, was such a security hole because otherwise you could have these nice wallpapers. So you could even have like interactive wallpapers that would change based on the date and time, something like that. Sony Ericsson did a lot uh, these things as well, but the Sony Ericsson wallpapers actually worked here as well because. Like it was a it was a standard thing. So here we only have some some of these landscapes, you know, so like little bit mountains with flowers and so on. It looks really nice. Probably looks even better on the naked eye than on the camera, but whatever. But yeah, it's it's much more fluid than the GIF or GIF could ever even dream of being. We've got some effects here. Like the screensavers are pretty much the same as wallpapers. You could send them the screensavers of wallpapers. It was completely up to you. It didn't really matter. The evergreen. The evergreen is probably green, too green to me, to my taste. And then the noir. So yeah, that actually goes well with my with my current theme. So there you go. Now I have a wallpaper which moves. And then we have the ringtones here, so I'll go through the ringtones uh, later on, and recordings, which you can record with this phone. Let's go actually through the media. So the two megapixel camera here. And um, bloody hell, does it look nice? No, it doesn't. If I take a look at these... Oh, let's, let's take a photo of these headphones, for instance. That's what the process looks like. Also takes quite a long time to actually save a photo. Yeah, and then the result is just not worth saving in the first place. No, this is something, um, I'm being too harsh now. This is something that was quite normal back in 2007, of course, what you would expect from this. There were some special uh, phones with better cameras like Nokia N73 and a Sony Ericsson K750 or 800 or something like that, or even the Nokia N95 actually from this time. Of course, if you were into mobile photography, you'd probably buy one of these phones and not this one. I've got a video, and a video, unfortunately, is 176 to 144. I say it, unfortunately, on purpose, because the uh, predecessors, the Nokia 6233, which I mentioned at the beginning of this video, could do VGA videos. This one can't. Ah. If this was the Nokia 6233, this could have been a VGA video. That's a shame. We can start a music player here, but of course we don't have any music. So it's not going to start. There you go. So we move over to media play, which I never understood the purpose of, which, you know, it could just play the same things, you know, like videos and stuff, but nothing really um, interesting about this. Uh, they moved it away anyway, because <laughs> you probably didn't see any purpose in it either. And instead, we've got a radio. Connect enhancement, that's weird. Connect enhancement, which I believe is... Oh, headphones don't work. What? Oh no! Okay. I didn't expect that, so either the connector is broken, or this pair of headphones, or something like that, because it, would sh it should recognize it should open the radio. You can see it's connected. 
Okay, so that's the reason why it also did not recognize in the settings menu. It didn't pop up. Mm, that means the connector is probably broken. Okay, <laughs> that means I'm not going to demonstrate a radio. Well, the radio worked. I can tell you that much, but unfortunately I can't show you. That's a real shame, actually. Mm, whatever. So, uh, we've got a voice recorder here. So the voice recorder I can record up to one hour, but we will only record five seconds for the purpose of the demonstration. So, hang on. Nobody can hear anything. Let's crank up the volume and play it back again. But we will only record five seconds. This is not a spectacular quality of a recording. Uh, there you go. Again, you know, exactly what you would expect back then. Then I've got Equalizer, which I believe you could even edit. Oh, well, maybe not this one, but the set one will be editable. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> Actually, not that much, no. Um, if you had a pair of headphones like these, uh, the equalizer would probably be useful because, uh, yeah, this yeah, the sound would not be optimum out of this, but um, yeah, you could just buy a better pair of headphones and then you would not need an equalizer. There you go. A stereo widening, um, yeah, maybe useful for some kinds of music, but I don't really think that it would be very good and definitely not good for spoken word. I remember this function. Let's go to the organizer. We're 30 minutes in. Um, so we've got alarm clock, of course, uh, which is just just one alarm. That's quite interesting, but it can be repeated, but you can only, only have one. There you go. So this is what the calendar looks like. You can add a new note like this. Meet and call, birthday, memo and reminder. So you can set up a reminder. It always opens this kind of um, form for you to fill out. Yeah, kind of interesting. But you could, you know, you could plan to call someone. That's actually pretty neat. I don't see that as an option in like today's smartphones. So interesting. We've got a to-do list here. Which, yeah, that's a um, to-do list with priorities and stuff. Simple enough, actually. Also, kind of good. I've got notes. Of course, you can have a text note. So I'll type in a text note and save it. And that's my text note. Yeah, exciting. <laughs> and... Um, if I go back, calculator. Calculator is another Java application, which is quite interesting. That, you know, there was no space for the calculator. We have to only have it as a um, as a Java application for some reason. But it has some extra functions. You know, by pressing the star key, you can get them like this. Uh, very well. A countdown timer was just a normal or an interval timer. Um, uh, yeah, you can have countdown. Five seconds, like this, and after five seconds, it will start screaming at you. And you can see the LEDs on the side also in action, kind of. They blink occasionally. And they will probably keep blinking even after this sound ceases to shout at you. Uh, all right, so that was, yeah, stopwatch. Split timing and lap timing was the difference. Well, split just goes like this. Just gives you the time when you press it. And then the lap timing always restarts back to zero. Neat. Some applications. Um, okay, <laughs> Slide Alarma is something that I installed myself. So that's a stupid application. I can show you, you know, briefly. Um, yeah, back when we used to have ICQ around here, 
So we're using ICQ to communicate with other people. There was like an internet communicator and before WhatsApp and Messenger and stuff like that, Signal. Um, yeah, and unfortunately it's an obscure language called Czech. So I'm sorry about that. The idea was basically, you know, just to collect points from putting these stacks or like, what are these, these boxes, move them into this field, you would have to have three of a kind. So do I have two bells? No, I don't. I can move other. There you go. He should, he should have put his banana over there. And of course, I don't get one right now in order to show you. So unfortunately, hello, there you go. Three of a kind. And see, this is in English. You know, some, some parts are in English, some are in Czech. It's very confusing. But this is the original game, Game of Snake 3, which was the 3D snake. I actually liked it personally. Some people didn't. I don't know. Yeah, there are a lot of people saying actually, yeah, the, the original Snake was better. And I'm like, whatever, you know, this is a different game. So I'm gonna eat this. You have the adventure mode and so on. You have to actually look for fruits. I cannot see that on the camera actually, so I don't know where things are. Because you have this small map here and then you can from from there you can actually see actually what is where what you should collect and so on so yeah fun little game why not sudoku in flash nokia was seriously into flash back then obviously so you could play sudoku which is a game of yeah let's play the easy version the game of oh okay that's too easy probably let's play the medium Should be the normal one, yeah. So of course, yeah, you have to have a one to nine in each row, in each column, and also within the box. There you go. So when you have, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight missing here. You cannot have eight here, so you put six because you already have eight on this row, and you put eight here. So this is how you play Sudoku. It's basically for people with no imagination, this is a great game, I believe. And in the collection, uh, it's empty. Why is it empty? Because this one doesn't have too much memory there. You could also install applications on the memory card anyway, so that was all good. And the web, which is not gonna work, of course, because, well, we don't have any services, but it was just a uh, plain, um, well, web browser, HTML, was XHTML, I think, was supported, but that was it. You know, it was not really a pleasure to use. But you could install the Opera Mini, and the Opera Mini would work with their own Opera servers, and they would basically be able to digest any normal website, uh, you know, that would be more suitable for your screen, something like that. It worked really well, I remember, so you could use that one. And the push to talk, yeah, which I have here at the bottom. So push to talk was basically supposed to be like a walkie-talkie thing. I don't know if I spoke about this in my uh, some of my previous videos, I probably did. So it was supposed to be like a walkie-talkie thing, but over GPRS, which, I don't know, that's just incredibly stupid. <laughs> like, nobody had enough data for that or anything. And I like, you know, just, just get a normal walkie-talkie, I think. I don't know. And also, like, it needed to be supported by carriers, which... Uh, I think there was just one carry in this country where it was supported and pretty much nowhere else. So yeah, ridiculous, stupid. It just died deservedly. Um, good, that's it. That's the complete functionality of this phone. Um, I will switch it off now because what else should I do? There's a new day starting outside. So we now have a little bit more light here and put it here like this next to the headphones yeah what a nice view for the end of the video i hope you liked it you know after a while 
well, it's a pretty long video. I'm sorry about it. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching if you made it to the end. And I'll see you guys, well, sometime next time. I'm not going to promise any dates because I'm very irregular with these videos. And I'm going to be very irregular even in the future. I'm not stopping, but, you know, that'll just be pauses because I just need to feel like it. Uh, when I'm making a video. I just need to be in the right mood. So there you go. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching. Check out the ringtones. I'll see you next time. And you will see me next time. Bye.